have another five minutes and like to open uh, to the audience for Q and A's. Uh, we have here a very diverse panel. We have one question here. Maybe we can get the mic to the lady. Thank you for your very exciting panel. My name is Marie Rose Biloa, and uh, I have a question especially for Professor Lang, but any of you can answer. You mentioned the, um, uh, the multipolar world, and uh, as we know, the BRICS had their geopolitical moment uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, they account for that what we say we hear 40% of the world GDP. So, um, do you consider the BRICS and the new doors they have been opening, like a common currency, and uh, you know, uh, in the uh, a new uh, world financial architecture, all these things? Do you consider that a threat, or this is a very positive development for trade? Uh, and the second question is. What could become a danger coming from the BRICS? Thank you. So, yeah, um, I'll take another two questions and then we uh, try to answer. There's a second question here, third one here, and then we'll try Here's to answer. A question to uh, the Belgian director of Total. Uh, how do you anticipate the decline of oil consumption because of electric engines? and because of a green economy, and how will it affect the oil prices? Okay, thank you. That's the second question. For Nicolas, there was a third question, and then we'll start answering, just trying to manage time. Can we have the mic in the middle for the gentleman? Thank you very much for this exciting panel. I'm speaking from the viewpoint of a uh, former and current member of uh, um, several boards of uh, large multinational companies. And I wanted to uh, um, ask you whether we, you shared this observation that I'm going to make and react uh, on it. Probably one of the most striking things when it comes to uh, strategic risks in the very past years has been the realization by very large multinational companies that uh, they were not um, uh, global companies opening, uh, working globally and freely, but they were belonging to a nationality. Mm -hmm. They, uh, all Western companies suddenly had to uh, give up their activities in Russia, for instance, and they realized that they have to uh, abide to a certain camp. Of course, they are making the same assessment with China mm -hmm. and other areas of threat. And they are taking, uh, they are taking consequences out of the situation in reshaping supply chains, the way they work, and making themselves more immune to those political risks, okay. as you have advised. Now, are they not, by doing that, sort of creating a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy and paving the way for possible increase of the likelihood of conflicts by reducing, in the very concrete way, through the way they operate, the increasing the possibilities of a conflict. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll try to answer every question in one minute to keep time. So Nicola, do you want to take the question on uh, energy transition yeah. and oil production? Yes, well, the, de the decline in, uh, in oil consumption, we. We don't have a crystal ball on total energy, but we, we expect, you know, the oil uh, demand to reach its peak during this current decade. And then to decline, uh, and to decline to a level, you know, to, to, be, to be net zero uh, by 2050, uh, uh, the oil uh, demand, uh, you know, could be, let's say, 20-25% of what it is today. There will still be an oil demand because, you know, there are some products that you cannot substitute, actually, yeah? particularly for petrochemicals, but then, hence, you know, the need for compensation of this residual demand. The big uncertainty is on the pace of the decline, uh, on how fast it's going to be. And regarding the question on oil price impact of all this, uh, what's important to, to have in mind is that uh, an oil field is not producing flat 
over time. So there is a natural decline of the production, which is 4 to 5% per year. So it means that if you stop investing in new old projects, in 10 years from now, the production will have decreased by 40%. Uh, so basically, the price, the old price, but in order to keep it under control or at an acceptable level, and it's a question of affordability of energy, companies need to continue investing in new development to offset the decline, or at least to offset the decline partly, you know, uh, when, when, when the demand is, uh, is, is decreasing. Uh, voilà, I hope it addresses the question. Very good, thank you. But there was a question about by reshaping supply chains, are we, inc and by segregating supply chain, are we increasing the risk of a conflict? Penny, 30 seconds, Tayo, 30 seconds. What's your view? Uh, so I think the question was also about nationalism and yeah. uh, US companies reacting you know, quickly on the Russia situation by pulling out. I think, in short, I would say yes. When I read Jake Sullivan's foreign affairs piece, uh, there's things in there, they don't mention the word trade, but there's other things in there that to me look like uh, companies are becoming part of the industrial national security strategy of the United States in a way that I think limits freedoms in some ways. And I do think it's something companies need to look at uh, very, very carefully. Thank you. Teo, Joe's well, comment. Uh, the companies are very quick in responding to this kind of restrictions and uh, many Korean companies are investing uh, to have a, a stable supply chain into uh, resource-rich countries like mm -hmm. Canada, Australia. There are lots of investment is being made by Korean companies mm -hmm. to, you know, to establish supply, uh, stable supply chain of critical minerals or raw materials. And, and di diversifying. Jay, before I enter on, enter on BRICS, what's, what's your view yeah, on BRICS? Yeah, I would just say there are a couple of additional factors uh, to watch out for. One is the uh, incredible upwelling of interest among stakeholders that were very vocal in the case of uh, the, the Russia pullout, um, putting a lot of pressure on boards, a lot of pressure on executive teams through various means, direct engagement, social media, and through politicians. And, uh, and this, was, this was facilitated in part by uh, active tracking by uh, many organizations that were looking at how uh, compliant individual companies were with the spirit of the need to, uh, to, to move out of, out of Russia. And in the case of China, um, one can easily imagine something similar happening depending on what the scenario is that we're talking about. The other piece is the sanctions regime that was put in place not just by the, by the United States, but also by the European Union, by the United Kingdom and, and others, um, was sufficiently uh, broadly defined so as to encourage a conservative approach on the part of individual companies so that they could ensure they didn't run afoul of, uh, of sanctions compliance. And um, we can see that although that makes it much more difficult to, uh, to, to control if you're the, the sanctioning uh, government, from a company perspective, it makes you um, want to listen to your lawyers who are telling who are telling you, uh, don't, don't incur any risk when it comes to sanctions. Do the thing that's easiest. And in many cases, it was just to leave the market. Yep. Uh, obviously, in the case of China, it will be a much more difficult conversation, uh, given how embedded supply chains are, market considerations are. But it's definitely on the minds of corporate leaders. Good. Thank you very much. And I think on BRICS, the um, our view is that there is a very positive potential in bringing that together. I think if you look uh, both from a trade perspective, from a financial perspective, from an energy perspective, I think BRICS has hugely kind of almost doubled its energy base by the expansion that was decided uh, this year. Uh, and so from our perspective, I think it has much more to win than to be in any case a danger. So, yeah, we had had a fast-paced discussion here on global trade. Penny, you said it's a force for good. I think we still believe in that. I would like to thank my panelists for this very broad perspective, for you, for your engagement, and I look further to very interesting discussions over the next few days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.